a second, Doug. I don't mean to cut you off, but you know what it is. Tiger Woods at the podium, the moment we have been waiting here on HQ. Let's listen in. Tiger, it is great seeing you, and we appreciate the time you're spending with us today. Oh, thank you, Rob. It's uh, hard to believe it's been 25 years since I won here, but uh, it's great to be back and be able to uh, feel the energy and the excitement of the patrons again. Uh, I hadn't seen them since you know when I won, and cause obviously we had a COVID year, and I missed last year. So it was neat to feel that energy out there on the golf course yesterday, and uh, hopefully this storm blows out of here, and, and uh, we get to have a great week. Thank you. Well, we join in celebrating your 25th anniversary of your first win because it was a transformational win and it changed forever the world of golf. So looking back Thank is you. quite special. Well, last year, last year at the 2021 tournament, um, all of us missed Tiger Woods greatly. And you and your family were in our thoughts and prayers for the next 14 months hoping for a complete and total recovery. It is great seeing you here today. So we will now you, open it up to questions. Jimmy Roberts. Hi, Tiger. Over here. Yep. Nice to see you. Um, are you surprised at all where you are right now physically? I mean, I think a lot of people are surprised that you're here and, and giving it a try. How about you? I've worked hard. Um, my team has been unbelievable. I've been lucky to have had great surgeons and great PTs and, and physios that have worked on me virtually every day. And we've worked hard to get to this point, to get to this, an opportunity to, to walk the grounds, test it out, and see if I can do this. Um, it's been a tough, tough year and uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of stuff that I had to deal with and, you know, I don't wish on anyone, but, you know, here we are and Masters Week and, you know, being able to play and practice and you know, for me, more importantly, to say thank you, thank you to all the guys that, that have uh, texted me, FaceTimed me and called me um, and given me all their support uh, to see them in person and to say thank you. It uh, has meant a lot. Got it. Tiger, when, when will you decide Doug. whether you can play and, and what determines that? Where's Doug? Here? Sorry. Sorry, Doug. Where are you at? Somewhere around here. Far right. Nope, I got you. Yep. When, when, yeah. when will you decide um, whether for sure you're, you're playing and what will determine that? Well, as of right now, I feel like I am going to play as of right now. Um, I'm going to play nine more holes tomorrow. Um, uh, my recovery has been good. I've been very excited about how I've recovered each and every day, and that, that's been the, the, the challenge. That's why I came up here and, and tested out for 27 holes, because we, we played the part three course. Charlie couldn't help himself. <laughs> um, so I was able to play uh, 27 holes that day um, and at home testing it. But it's the recovery. You know, how, how am I going to get all the you know, swelling out and recover for the next day? And uh, my team has been fantastic and worked very hard. Um, so we've got another day of nine more holes, and uh, then come game time. Jim? Hey, Tiger. Good to see you. How much physical pain do you have to endure playing golf? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> there is. Um, there is, you know, each and every day, you know, obviously given – what I've gone through with my back and then obviously with, with my right leg. Um, yeah, there is each and every day. How much does that take away from your ability to play or have you just mentally overcome it or have to overcome it every time you play? Uh, it's been one of those things where I've, I've had to endure pain before and um, this, this is different. Obviously, this is a lot more traumatic what has transpired to my leg. Uh, We've had to put a lot of work, but as I said, I'm very thankful to my surgeons and my, my PTs and physios that have, have worked on me and have given me this opportunity to, uh, to play golf. Michael, Bamberger. Thank you. Tiger, uh, to go back to Sunday 2019 for a minute, mm -hmm. uh, you got 12 right behind you. You made an incredible part there. Started to rain a little bit. You go to 13T. Your foot looks like maybe you're trying to hit a cut shot. I'm not sure. Your foot slipped a little bit, and then the ball winds up in the middle of the fairway. And I'm wondering if you ever got to see what the ball actually did. No, I didn't. Um, if you look at what 
Jeff sets it up you know, each and every year, and he, he moves that tee over maybe another step. And if you look at everyone, there's nowhere else to go. So everyone who has played there has teed off virtually from the same spot. It's like digging into a batter's box. Um, and it's sandy there. And um, there's obviously there's really very little light that gets back in there in that area. So the grass is never you know as pristine as it is anywhere else on a golf course. And we're all hitting from the same spot. And it's not uncommon to see guys slip there. And I did. I slipped and I hit it off the toe and hit a, hit a toe draw right around the corner. Draw. It didn't go over the trees? Nope. I had toe draw. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And? Hey, Tiger. Great to see you. Yep. How agonizing has it been just making the decision for you? Just talking about just well, the decision-making process. It's just a matter of what my body's able to do the next day and the recovery. You know, that's, that's the hard part is that, yes, we push it and try and recover the best we possibly can, you know, that night and then see how it is the next morning. Then, you, then the, all the, <laughs> the activations and, and going through that whole process again and you warm it up and then you warm it back down or test it out and then you got to warm up, cool it back down. Then you got to do, do that um, day in and day out. And it, it gets agonizing and teasing because of simple things that, you know, that, I would normally just go do. It would take now a couple hours here and a couple hours there to prep and then wind down. Um, so activity time to do what I want to do. Uh, it adds more time on both sides of it, pre and post. Uh, so that has been, uh, it's not like something I haven't done, but the times have gotten longer on, on both sides. Daniel? Tiger, hey, you've, you've said countless times throughout your career that you don't enter a golf tournament unless you think that you can win it. Mm -hmm. So the question is simple. Do you think you can win the Masters this week? I do. And what have you seen in your preparation that leads you to believe that? Well, I can, I can hit it just fine. And I, I, I don't have any qualms about what I can do physically from a golf standpoint. It's now walking is the hard part. You know, this is normally not a easy walk to begin with. Um, uh, now, given the conditions that you know my leg is in, it gets a little bit more more difficult. And you know that's uh, you know 72 holes is uh, it's a long road, and uh, it's going to be a, a tough challenge and a challenge that I'm, I'm up for. Jeff, uh, Tiger, just on that topic, what, what part of the golf course is most difficult in terms of, of walking? Do you worry about slippage and uh, just also your assessment of the changes in the, the golf course? Well, I've, I've, don't worry about slipping. I've, I've gotten medals in, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, even with the rain, doesn't, doesn't really concern me. Uh, some of the changes are, some are more drastic than others. Others are very subtle. Um, resurfacing of on three, but that's, you know, they've resurfaced every green since I've been here. Uh, but <coughs> what they did on 11 is, uh, you know, interesting. Uh, just from the standpoint that you know we're further back, and then uh, we thought that Larry my shot is gone. Now it's really gone. Uh, then raising the green up even more so on the right hand side, and we're, we're further back, so we're more prone to hit the ball over there anyway. So now it's a, it's a harder and more difficult pitch. Um, you know, other than that, uh, you know, the softening of, of 13, I understand it. Trying to add a you know a couple new pins. Uh, which they, they, they tend to do here. Um, it's, over the years, I've never seen them take away pins. Um, they always add it to areas in which they can grow more pins and, and more hold locations, options, uh, for the committee to you know, give us as, as a challenge. But I've never seen them take away pins. And so uh, 13 kind of you know, fits into what their, their philosophy has been here. Patrick? Tiger, hi there. It's uh, wonderful to see yes. you, and thanks very much for your time. Um, from that day early last year to this day, mm. and this of all weeks, when you reflect on all you've been through, on all you've overcome, what words do you choose today to now reflect on these 14 months? Thankful. Yeah, very, very thankful. Thankful for uh, just everyone's support, um, everyone who's been involved in um, my process of the work in that I've put in each and every day, uh, the people I work with, my, my whole team, 
uh, and just as I was alluding to all the support from the players out here, you know, we're a big fraternity and the, the amount of texts and FaceTimes and calls I've gotten over the past year have, have meant a lot. And uh, to see some of the guys, you know, at home, whether I've been out at Medalists, uh, out there playing and see them again, or to have seen them yesterday in, in person, then just say, say thanks. Um, I saw a few of them at the Hall of Fame induction. Um, but I'm sure as the week goes on, I'll see more of them. So it's been great. And tonight is the night of all nights. Uh, to see all the guys again and uh, listen to all the, the chiding and the stuff that, you know, I can't ever repeat here and we don't ever repeat, but the fact that what we're able to say to each other, it's, it's just awesome. Ian, third row on the left. Hi, Tiger. If someone had told you in the first few days or weeks after your accident that you would be able to compete in this Masters with the expectation of winning it, what would you have said or thought? Well, at that time, I was still in a hospital bed, and I was that for the next three months. And so I never left that hospital bed, even if it was in my living room, for three months. So that was a, a tough road. And to finally get out of that where I wasn't in a wheelchair or crutches and walking and still had more surgeries ahead of me, um, to say that I was going to be here playing and talking to you guys again, uh, <laughs> would, have, would have been very unlikely. Steve? Hey, what do the shoes that you're wearing now give you that the shoes that you were wearing before don't? Well, I have very limited mobility now. Uh, I just, with you know the rods and plates and screws that are in my leg, um, I needed something different, something that, that allowed me to be more stable. And, uh, and that's what I've, I've gone to, so it's, uh, Nike's been fantastic over the years of providing me um, with equipment and work, and we have worked. We've we've been working on trying to find something to uh, allow me to to do this and then swing again. Um, and we're still going to continue doing it, and um, hopefully, it'll have we'll have something soon. Mr. Murray, Tiger, you, you spoke in the Bahamas in November about being at peace with what the, the future held because you you came back, you won here. You scaled that mountain. What's been the main motivation to, to do it again, to put yourself through it all again? Well, I love competing. And I, I feel like if I can still compete at the highest level, I'm going to. And if I feel like I can still win, I'm going to play. But if I feel like I can't, then you won't see me out here. Uh, you, you guys know me, know me better than that. And as D asked earlier, I don't show up to an event unless I think I can win it. So. Uh, that's the attitude I've had, and um, there will be a day when it won't happen, and I'll know when that is. Um, but physically, the challenge this week is I don't have to worry about the the ball striking or the the game of golf. It's actually just the hills out here. Um, that's going to be the challenge, and it's going to be a challenge of of a major marathon. John Hopkins. Are there any particular weather conditions that would make it more difficult for you to decide to play? Oh, I mean, in <laughs> kind of just in general with, with my body, anytime it's cold, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel very good. I think anyone who's in this room who's older than me can probably attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> uh, Mr. Axelrod? I just want to follow up uh, on this notion of your rehab process, mm -hmm. if you hadn't been able to go, would you be satisfied with your career here and your career in general and how much of that idea, I still got work to do here, was fueling the rehab process? No, I feel like I could, if everything went well, if my, my surgeons gave me a chance and then my, my PTs, and with the surgeons, they all said that I could, I could do this again. Now, it's up to me to endure the pain and, and all that. Um, but I felt like I, I could still do this. And I don't know how many more years I can do this. Um, I was very fortunate to have come back in the end of 17 uh, when I did, because I didn't know if I could still do it again at that time. Um, but again, my surgeons gave me an opportunity and my PTs did the same. 
um, and this is kind of the same scenario, but um, a little bit more severe than it was back then. But if you couldn't have, would have you been satisfied? Yes, I would have. Yeah, I think I think 82 is a pretty good number, and 15 is not too bad either. <laughs> Bob Harry, Tiger. Yeah. Uh, when you were here last week, would that have been your first time uh, back since the 2020 Masters? Yes, that was. Um, it was. Yep. So, was given all you've been through, was it at all emotional coming here, uh, even on a practice day, and how much did having Charlie play with you uh, add to the whole experience? Yeah, it it meant a lot to to both of us. Um, yeah, he got a, a chance to play, you know, right before you know, the the 20 Masters, and uh, he's grown a lot since then, um, become a lot better player. So you know, it, it was fun to see the changes in, in him and for us as a as a family to go out here and then have Robbie out here and, and JT, who's you know, it's who's like my younger brother and Charlie's older brother, uh, for us to come out here and just play together. And just had, just had, we just had a blast, and uh, couldn't ask for a better day, temperature-wise. I mean, it was just just a, a perfect day, and uh, it was fun for me as a as a parent to to see him enjoy it, uh, uh, f and then just trying trying to remind him. I say the, these putts break a little bit more than they do back home. Uh, Florida greens are not quite like Augusta. Um, so a couple of the putts, it was pretty funny. He says, uh, just outside left? I said, no, it's more like three feet outside left. <laughs> uh, so then we, we had a great time. And as I said, it was, it was a blast. And for me to have that opportunity again, um, as Ian was asking earlier, uh, whether I, you know, a year ago, what I have said yes to that, I, you know, it was a totally different scenario. Mr. Lipton? I think uh, hi. Um, is it working? Is it working? Yeah. Um, would it be easier for you um, to go out early Thursday and later on Friday than, than vice versa in terms of recovery? And secondly, you've been used to adulation uh, throughout your career and mm -hmm. understandably so. Have you ever f felt the sense of warmth and reverence you got on that Fatchis round yesterday? Because it was, seemed to me remarkable, the, the outpouring of, of warmth in your direction. Um, the, as I said earlier, the last time I had, I had had patrons out here was on that Sunday when I won. And it, it felt a little bit like that, not quite as frenzied as, as that was, and you know, that was a little bit different. That was on a Sunday of a, of a, of a championship Sunday. Um, but, you know, yesterday was, was incredible. Everyone loves Freddy's. That's why they all came out. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. John? Tiger, what do the doctors tell you about moving forward? Is this as good as you're going to feel, or does it, does it, will it get better? My movement probably will not get much better. Um, will I feel better? Yes, I, I will. I, I'm going to get stronger, and the whole limb will get stronger. But as far as movement, I, I probably not much more. I'm so limited with you know the hardware in there. Um, I won't get much more. Mr. Fields, Tiger, when you recovered from or came back from the spinal fusion, you were asking you would respond about Ben Hogan and how uh, you know the severity of what he went through after his crash. Are you drawing any inspiration now from his story, given that like you, his problem really wasn't ball striking, but just surviving the walk? Yeah, it's. You know, what he went through pre-round, obviously he didn't have the technology that we have now, uh, but the amount of hot tubs that he would have to take, you know, pre-round, post-round, in the middle of the night, uh, just, just to be able to get up and swing a club the next day, you know, I certainly appreciate that. And, uh, you know, the, the treatments have gotten so much better and, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, because if the treatments hadn't gotten any, if I had to go through it, you know, with my accident, given at, well, what had happened to me during his era, um, I wouldn't be playing this week, that's for, that's for sure. Gary? 
Tiger, uh, given your leg, what are the more troublesome lies for you? Are they uphill, downhill, or side hill? And are oh. there certain parts? <laughs> are there certain parts of some fairways that you might try to avoid that you wouldn't have thought twice about a couple of years? No, if I'm in the fairway, it's all good. So um, the only flat spots here, as we know, are the 18 tee boxes. Other than that, there's nothing flat about this place. And uh, if if what I have to worry if I have to worry about it being in 14 fairways, um, I'll give I'll take that any day. Todd Lewis in the back left. Tiger, um, I, I know you're here feeling you can win, mm -hmm. but given the challenges you have with your body in the competitive arena now, these new ones and the challenges that you have overcome, how do you define a successful week here at the Masters? Well, I think that. The fact that I was able to get myself here to this point is a, is a success. And now that I am playing, now everything is focused on how do I get myself into a position where I'm on that back nine on Sunday with a chance, um, just like I did you know, a few years ago. Uh, Paul Dowdy, we have time for possibly two more questions. Paul? Thank you. Tiger, over here. Mm -hmm. uh, two, real quick, two real quick, if you don't mind. Do, do you have a, a personal tradition unlike any other here? And if, if this place were flat, would your, would your decision be a lot easier? Well, uh, any traditions? I don't, know. I, I, I don't know how to answer that one. I've, well, I've been coming here since 95. And so um, uh, as far as a flat golf course, if it was back home at Medalist, it would have been a, hell of a lot easier, yes. Uh, is it Richard Castillo? Yes, sir. Hey, Tiger. Yeah. Um, Billy Horschel talked about saying that you wanted to walk away. This, coming here and getting yourself to this position was all about walking away from the game on your own terms. Has that been a motivation for, for you to compete and possibly win here at Augusta? It has. And um, when I, I decide to hang it up when I feel like I, I can't win anymore, and that, that'll be it. Uh, but I feel like I can still do it. And... Uh, I feel like I still have the hands to do it. Uh, the body's moving good enough. Uh, I've been in, in worse situations and played at one tournaments. Now, uh, haven't been in situations like this where I've had to you know, walk and endure. You know, when I'm going to you know, try and endure, that's going to be different. It's a different challenge. But um, my, my back surgeries that I've had before and the stuff I had to play through, um, even going back to the, the U.S. Open when my leg was a little bit busted. Uh, you know, those are all times that I've, I can draw upon that I was successful. Um, how I've learned how to block things out and focus on what I need to focus on. And uh, that's certainly going to be the challenge this week. Well, Tiger, no matter what your decision is, it has been a joy to Thanks, have Rob. you back at Augusta. And best of luck to you. You got it. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for having being me. with us. Thank, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The words, as of right now, I feel like I'm going to play from Tiger Woods, the moment we've been waiting for, teeing it up, already five-time winner when it comes to the Master, looking for six. We got a lot of the answers from the questions we had early on, his mobility, the health. One thing he did joke about, though, the only flat portion of the course he has to worry about is the tee box. Everything else is hilly. He has to get up and down, uh, something that he's looking forward to. Also, possibly wearing the foot joint. We were wondering about the footwear, how that might impact his play. But it does look like Tiger Woods said he has one more round of nine tomorrow to dictate if he will tee it up Thursday. But you heard it there. It seems like it's going to happen for the big cat. Tiger's back, and it's all contingent on that health leading up to Thursday. We're going to take a quick break here on CBS Sports HQ. When we return, Tiger Woods says he plans to play. Barring any setbacks, we had Doug Bell all morning long. He'll be joining us once again to break down Tiger's comments from his press conference. We continue to follow breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ where Tiger Woods has made it known that he's coming back, saying, quote, as of right now, I feel like I am going to play in reference to the Masters, seeking his sixth Masters jacket, green jacket, which on this day 25 years ago, back in 1997, Tiger Woods won his first of 15 major championships not all that long ago, we spoke with Jim Nance at the Genesis Invitational trying to temper some of those expectations, but Tiger says he's in a place now where he can compete and, in his eyes, win 
this tournament at Augusta National. All right, let's get Doug Bell back here to join us. So, Doug, you, you sat and listened like all of us did. I have a lot to unpack here, but first off, what are your thoughts after hearing and then confirming the news, of course, that Tiger plans to be back in competitive golf this week? Well, Tommy, I was surprised it took the second question to ask, are you going to come back and tee it up on Thursday? The first question, talk about the extent of your injuries. Uh, we, we want to know, is he going to play? And and he's going to play. I don't think there's any question. I, I think it was it, it's safe for him to say, unless something happens between now and tomorrow, uh, again, he'll play nine more holes tomorrow, weather dependent. Uh, if it all goes well, and I suspect it will, we're going to see Tiger Woods teed up on Thursday. Uh, I think we heard, a, he mentioned he was very uh, thankful for the opportunity again. He emphasized that. Uh, he appreciates all the love, uh, text messages, phone calls from fellow players. Uh, I, I, he just, it was a, I sense he is so excited to be back 25 years after he won his first Masters. And as he said, the golf game is not an issue. The golf game is where he wants it to be going into a major championship. It's just a matter of walking the hills, the peaks and the valleys, the side hills, the uphills, the downhills at Augusta National. That'll be a challenge and we'll see how it goes as the week progresses. But I'm I'm confident, Tommy, that uh, we're going to see Tiger tee it up this Thursday. And I can't wait. It's going to be it's really going to be special. And when he does, I want to make sure I get this right here. When he does, it'll be 508 days which is the second wow. longest break on the PGA Tour for competition for Tiger Woods. Uh, it only is bested by 522 back with the Wyndham Championship in 2015 to the Farmers in 2017. Given that then, Doug, the second longest layoff in Tiger Woods' career, what concerns do you have other than the physical stuff? What are you looking out for for Tiger on Thursday? Well, uh, again, uh, mentally, you heard the question. Uh, you've always come into these major championships. In fact, any tournament uh, saying that you come in with the idea you're going to win. And Tiger said that's still his mindset. He thinks he can win this Thursday. That's always been his mindset. It was great to hear that. And again, he emphasized several times in his press conference that the game is where he wants it to be. He's hitting it. He's really hitting it well. Uh, his driver off the tee, the iron play, he said the putter and the short game is really, really good. It's just a matter of physically, can he endure the pain? As he said a couple of times, it is painful for him to play golf. There's no doubt about it. His prep time leading into a round, Tommy, we're talking hours and hours, upwards of five hours, getting up in the morning, rehabbing not only the leg, but remember, he still has to get that back that is fused together has to get that warmed up to play. And so it is a process for Tiger Woods. And then as he mentioned in his press conference, post round, even though he's been only playing nine holes, he has to go back and let his team, his physical therapy team, go to work and work on that leg to keep the swelling from going down. So it really is, when you hear him describe it and you think about it, it's an amazing process that he's going through just to get to this point. So we'll see what happens. The game is there. I just think physically, can he hold up? If he makes the cut, can he hold up physically for four days walking the hills of Augusta National? That is the big question. He referenced it. It takes more time on both sides for him to get yes. golf ready from a competitive standpoint. And to follow up on that, someone asked him, but it was a double question, so I don't know if he addressed it. But in your <laughs> eyes, because you've been out there and you've been with Tiger, do you think he prefers early late or late early if he has his druthers? Well, I think he would prefer uh, early late. Uh, he would like to be one of the early guys to tee off on Thursday and one of the later guys to play on Friday. And for those of us uh, across the globe who watch on television, I think that's what most people would prefer. They want to come home on Friday night or Friday afternoon. Let's get off early and let's go watch Tiger uh, tee it up. And then, of course, if he plays well and does make the cut, it'll be at a later tee time on Saturday. And what he hopes is a late tee time on Sunday with a chance to win his sixth green jacket. But to answer your question, I think he would prefer certainly let's get it started relatively early. It's a small field. It's not a super early morning tee time. And then it'll give me a chance to rehab, get ready for what will be a later tee time on Friday. That might be his best chance to get to the weekend. Yes. Doug Bell joining us here on CBS Sports HQ. Doug, certainly appreciate all of your insight from today.
Taking a look at Tiger Woods again at Augusta. It'll be 508 days between competitive golf for him on the PGA Tour, which marks the second to longest drought that he has ever had. I referenced the 2015 to 17 gap of 522 days. When he returned to the Farmers Insurance Open in 2017, he actually missed the cut that weekend, but we're all hoping for a better result this week at Augusta National. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.